Given I've had to stick with the original mod guards, where the chrome is slightly pitted, and the indicators which are less than perfect, there isn't much point re-rimming the front wheel because it is only minor, very minor. I don't know if you can see that up there, can you? No, you can't. Let me just bring you up a little bit. It's a minor pitting here, which you know is in keeping now with the rest of the chrome. So it's not bad rim at all, really. Once it's on and polished up, it won't look that bad, I don't think. So that leaves the wheel bearings to sort out because. Uh, There's no play in them at all. Spindle turns freely. Uh, they feel a little stiff, but that's probably old grease. So I'm just going to take this retaining ring off and have a look. I mean, I know you can't see right inside the bearing, but you can get a very good idea given there's no play in things, no roughness, no clearly there's no noise. It's not spinning fast enough to make a noise, but to all intents and purposes, despite, despite their age, it does appear they're okay. So I'm just going to take this retaining ring off and have a quick look. It's left hand thread. I haven't got the right tool. So very gentle persuasion. Right, you get the idea. I'll bring you back when I've got it off. Right, that's the ring off. As I suspected, the bearings look like new, they're well packed with grease, there is no sign of any corrosion. As I said, there was no play when I wiggle them about when they're still on the bike. So, they're staying. I'll soon find out if there's a problem once it's been in use for a while. If Should there be one, it's not a big deal to drop the wheel out and knock the bearings out. So, they are staying. So our retaining ring goes back in. I will use the same hole to tap it back as I used to tap it out, thereby giving me three more attempts of the drift before that has to be replaced. Um, and to be honest, I've barely distorted the one I have used. So with care, they can be taken on and off several, several times without the tool. Right, I'll tap that back round into place and we'll rebuild the brakes. Right, we have our touched in front brake plate in crinkle black, which is a bit dusty because it's been sitting in the, uh, sitting in the shelf for some time. Then we have our two arms with some anti-seize compound on, which allows them to move freely but won't leak into the brake. I hope. And then we have a piston goes in each side. to be missing a bit. I'll bring it back when I find it. Hold on. Right, I found a second piston. I'd put in another bag for some reason. I'm not sure why. Right, so our piston should pop in there. When I move those round. Is there something on there? There we go. Yep, there we go. Had the uh, arms in the wrong holes. There we go. Lovely job, eh? Right. And then there are adjusters, of course, that can be cleaned. Which 
Let's go like that. Right, let me just turn it off again because I've confused myself here for a second. Right, momentary brain freeze. I'm reusing the old shoes. There's nothing wrong with them. The original Lockheed, the ones that fitted at the factory. I know they contain asbestos. I will be taking care when I work on the brakes in future, obviously. But they're unworn, they're riveted, the rivets are all secure, and I wouldn't trust old glued shoes. But these are riveted, they're absolutely fine. It would be silly, I think, to uh, waste them. So the adjuster fits in there like that. With the shoe underneath and it has to fit on there like that which in theory gives us our adjustment but let me just double check that with a screwdriver yeah so as you can see, that brings the shoe in and out as I expected, so let's make sure it's on minimum. I'll do the same on the other side and hook up our, uh, our springs, which I'll have to go and look at my picture I took when this came apart, because being an old git with a memory like a sieve, I can't remember, obviously I know where they go, I can't remember the orientation of the springs because there's a long and a short side. Let me just go and refer to my picture. In fact, when you come back the springs will probably be on because it is just a matter of peeling them off. But I'll see. Oh, springs on. Minor fiddle, but nothing uh, too dramatic. Adjusters are backed off, so that can now go into the wheel, which is a straightforward nut and bolt job. Right, so our uh, back brake, a bit of anti seize on the spindle, nice and loose, nice and free. Which is good. And then we will have our brake shoes, which I'll just clean up in a second. Our springs, which I'll clean up. A plate for the two plates for the shoes to sit on. And I think that's it. Right, let's clean it up and have a look. The usual minor struggle with the springs as you pull them over because they're reasonably tight, nothing horrendous. Our trailer's back by the top stud as it came off. So that's ready to go on. Uh, there is, of course, the brake spring and lever also got to go on. But I'm just going to go and clean them up first and we'll come back and look at them. Right, the spring slightly awkward and I more awkward, I should say, than I imagined. One end goes through a hole there, the other end comes around underneath the um, I had to use mole grips, pull it underneath to hook over. I think that's fully home. I sincerely hope so. We shall soon find out. Yes, it's looking good.
Oh, right. Is that right? It must be right. Uh, that's the only way that could go on, wasn't it? Let me have a try in the rear wheel. Yep, that's right, it is correct. I don't know why I was uh, puzzled. And we have that. He's cleaning up. Oh, we'll go through there. Or the other way around. So, a bit more cleaning needed on the back wheel, I think. Slightly scummy still, but. Uh, Not a lot. It's pretty good. So I'll go and give that a clean. And then that's the back wheel done. Right, now we know the brake fits. We've had the retaining ring off, as we saw with the front wheel. And I've cleaned and repacked the bearings. They're all in uh, good condition, as far as I can see. So next we're going to fit the sprocket, which is again unworn. So a bit of anti-seize on the bolts, on the shank of the bolts. And securing nuts on the underside. So with the brake plate in, the tyres and inner tubes are on their way and the wheels will be ready to fit. Other than cleaning up the speedo drive and the spacer, which I'll do next. The final thing for the uh, back wheel is the speedo drive, which I've cleaned up, as you can see. And I've greased the moving ring in the inside as well, push grease into that and cleaned up the rear wheel spacer. So that's everything for the rear wheel done, ready to go. Amongst the parts of the ride are new tyres. Now I normally would have fitted K70s, but I was recommended these tyres for a low mileage classic, it's not going to be used a lot. They're made by Mitis in the Czech Republic. They have a classic looking tread, uh, they're about half the price of the K70s, so I have absolutely no idea how long they will last. Um, I will find out. They were quite easy to fit, reasonably soft sidewalls, wasn't a, wasn't a huge struggle to get them on. Um, I have only fitted one rim lock. They originally came with two. I, I really don't know why. Um, this is never going to be used off-road, despite the Scrambler name. So one is more than sufficient, I would have thought. There are plenty of bikes of this size that manage without one, never mind two. So there we are. They look very nice. I'm quite impressed. I think it cost me uh, £50 delivered. We shall see what they're like. If you don't try, you don't know, do you? The uh, brake drum is fitted on the other side. The chain is loosely draped over the sprocket. Both wheel adjusting sleeves are in place with their end caps. The end caps have to be fitted into the end first. You can't slide them on, I discovered. The spindle's grease ready to go. The speedo drive is in place and the sleeve spacer is inside that, so I think that's everything for the back wheel. I think we shall soon find out. Right. 
and this isn't going to work like that. Let me just turn you off because this is going to be a, a struggle. Right, there we are, so I'm a bit of a faff because because these had all been cleaned up and redone. They didn't want to stay in place as they went in. But it's on. I just need to do the chain now and sort out the brake stay. In fact, I'll do the brake stay next and then do connect the chain, and I won't adjust it just yet. I've got everything on the front end as well. But there we are. It's looking ever more like a motorcycle with every passing minute, which of course is what we want. Right, the uh, rear brake stay arm, whatever you want to call it, is on. And also in our little bag of goodies was a replacement lens for here, which I have already fitted, and a replacement rear lens, which I am about to fit now. Now, just a quick word on parts, as this suddenly made me think about it. I could have got out of that lens or the ease or the gasket for the uh, sprocket cover. Could have got any of them at any time off eBay. But I didn't because I waited till I needed to place an order with a proper BSA parts supplier as opposed to uh, some of the online vendors. I mean, there are some very good online vendors, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against them. Uh, but I was had to place an order anyway with my normal supplier. Their price for the rear lens was £2 less than the cheapest one at eBay. The indicator lens was about a pound less than anyone else wanted on eBay. And the gasket was half the price that anyone wanted on eBay. Now obviously there's postage to be added to that because if you're buying them individually, you'd have to pay £3 postage or whatever, I don't know what the exact figure is. However, because it's part of a group part, each individual bit, the postage was like 20 pence on each item. So still a considerable saving to buy in bulk, as it were, from a well-known supplier. I also trust these suppliers because uh, most of the parts I've had of them have been good quality and fitted and they are very well respected. I'm not going to mention names, uh, it's not fair on other suppliers who may be equally good, I've no way of knowing without trying each individual one of them. I have tried an awful lot of classic bike part suppliers in my time, believe me. Nearly, nearly all of them have been very good, the specialist ones, nearly all of them have been very, very good. So take your pick, choose whichever one you fancy or from latest recommendations through a club or whatever. But uh, you also get comebacks more easily, I think, if there is a problem when you deal with proper specialist suppliers. Anyway, that's my tuppence worth for. You can dismiss it as the mad ramblings of an old fool, because they probably are. Having said all that, this doesn't want to line up now. It's more likely the brackets than anything else, sir. I'll bring you back again. There's no point watching me struggle with a light bracket. All right. There we are. Very smart it looks too. Uh, the mounting tag had to be bent slightly across as they're just uh, simple shaped pieces of metal. And on it went. Right. That is all I'm going to do tonight. Getting tired, make mistakes when you get tired, things don't go how they're meant to go. But a lot of progress, I think. Let me just zoom you out a little bit and just remind you where we're up to. So, as I say, it's starting to look a bit more like a bike. Back wheels in, chains on, brake stays on. 
I need to paint the brake rod, which you will see very shortly. Uh, that's it. That's all we're doing for the second part of this video. Hopefully the front tyre will arrive very soon, in which case the front wheel will go on and I'm waiting for the handlebars, the speed arm out, and when they come I can connect up the front end and sort out the wiring, which will then just leave building up the rest of the engine and then sorting out the paint, exhaust and what I'm going to do with the seat. So things are going well, let's plod on. Right, the front tyre has finally come. It was ordered at the same time as the back, it was processed at the same time as the back and took six days longer to get here. Don't know why, no idea. Anyway, it's here. It's rolled between the forks at the moment because it's too much fat fiddling about whilst on camera, so basically it's ready to go in. As you can see, it has the same vintage tread pattern as the rear, or very similar vintage tread pattern to the rear, although it has a slightly different uh, code number, I think, for some reason. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So if I just uh, zoom you out slowly, again, try not to make you seasick while we're doing it, then drop down. Actually, you probably can't see them, so I'll I'll bring you back in again. There we go. So on the floor on either side we have the four caps, four plain washers, four split washers and four nuts on each side. The caps only go on one way. Everything's greased up, ready to go, the spindle, the threads, etc, etc, etc. All I need to do is lift the wheel and bolt them on, which is what I'm going to do. There's no point doing it on camera. It's all very straightforward and I will also bolt down the uh, brake back plate at the same time and then I'll bring you back when it's finished because I think that's the end of this video. So I'll bring you back when it's done show what it looks like. Right, caps are on. There is a gap between the caps and the fork leg which is how it was meant to be. As long as the gap is even all the way around, you can't have them cut one way or another, you've got to make sure they're even all the way around, which they are at the moment. Uh, so that's it really. One front wheel. I'll probably just stop the brakes. That's simply a matter of popping off the rubber cap and turning it just a screw we saw earlier. And also, let me just bring you up. round a little bit. There we go. And then zoom you out. And as you can see, hopefully, that's the front mud guard, the original front mud guard mounted in the lower position, which frankly I prefer. It may not be entirely original, but I think it looks better. And then the other issue, which I forgot to mention, is our new front tyre. On some advice from somebody I know who uh, knows about these things, the original front tyre on the Firebird was three and a half inch section, and it's meant to be overtired to the detriment of the handling. And apparently a reversion to 3.25 19 inch gives sharp handling. I don't know, I've never tried, I've got no comparison. But as I say, I respect their judgment. And so that's what I've gone for. So it is in fact a 325 by 19 front tyre. Still looks fine to me, doesn't look too skinny or anything, looks nicely in proportion. So the final things I'll do now is I will put the brake anchor nut on with its large washer and then I'll adjust up the front brake so I know that the shoes are where they should be before I start fitting the cable, which hopefully will be in the next video 
because the handlebars are on the way allegedly, the cables are on the way allegedly, as are the grips, all that sort of stuff. So I'll build that up, which will enable me then to put all the wiring in place and I can start connecting that up. And then we will have a complete bike then, apart from the finishing bits of the engine. All good stuff. Just before I go, this wheel needs a bit more cleaning. Um, I mentioned the adjusters and I thought, well, I'd better show you rather than just tell you I'm going to do it. So there is a rubber bump and then in there you get access to the shoes. However, it's darker than I thought, so I'm going to have to get the light and reposition you.